Hi, my name is Divya Shali Parekh. Um, I'm a first year resident at Upstate Medical University. Um, this is my first ASCO. I'm presenting two posters on Monday. Um, the first poster is about if dose adjustment for 5-FU with DPYD muta mutational status um, is appropriate. Um, we thought of this study because we realized that a lot of patients don't get dose adjustment for 5-FU, which forms a cornerstone in a lot of head and neck cancer treatments. Um, the CPIC is a body that sets out dose adjustments per an activity score based on the mutational status. Um, so we took a, a set of around 180 patients. We did genetic testing, uh, found out who had no mutations, who was heterozygous and who had a homozygous mutation. Um, they were dose adjusted according to the guidelines set out by the CPIC. Um, and then we compared all grade toxicities in this population versus those who received full dose. Um, and we found that there was no statistically significant increase in the toxicity, um, which means that the dose adjustment set out by the CPIC is accurate and it will need data to back it up, but it looks like that should be the case. Um, the, other sp the, the other poster that I have is about um, STK11 mutation frequency in lung adenocarcinoma. Um, STK11 is a tumor suppressor gene. Um, muta inactivating mutations in this particular gene provide resistance to checkpoint inhibitors in patients with lung adenocarcinoma, um, and they set for the more aggressive form of cancer. Um, so we noticed that with increasing use of checkpoint inhibitors in lung adenocarcinoma, the frequency of this resistance conferring mutation was increasing across the population. Um, so we look at a 10 year period for all patients who got genetic testing at Upstate Medical University. Uh, and we found that indeed the frequency of SCK11 did go up from 16 to 20%. Um, we uncovered some other interesting facts as well. Like this was, this had a lower association with mutated KRAS but a much higher association with KEEP1, which is another mutation. Um, we realized that the combination of KEEP1 and um, SDK11 was um, giving people a very high degree of resistance to checkpoint inhibitors. Um, and so this is worth pointing out because target, uh, strategies to mitigate this either by reactivation of SDK11 or targeting more downstream molecules like STAT3 or SCD1 will be important. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.